Hello and welcome to, to Charles Kelly Money Tips. I uh, hope you're having a great day. I, I got on late today uh, because I've had a lot of things on today, but I'm here now uh, bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. I'm broadcasting this live on Facebook Live and also for my Money Tips podcast, which you can find at moneytipsdaily.com or on iTunes, Stitcher, however you uh, get your podcasts. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many hours a week do you work? Or how many hours a day do you work? How many days a week do you work? I ask this because billionaire uh, Alibaba founder uh, Jack Ma says that working a 12-hour day is a, a, a blessing. Literally, he said it's a blessing. And uh, the outspoken co-founder of uh, Alibaba supports a 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. working day six days a week okay uh, and while you know this is goes against what european countries are doing they're moving towards shorter hours you know more time off more maternity leave more paternity leave even uh leave when your your pet dies you know this sort of stuff um that, that and especially in the scandinavian countries where they're promoting shorter working weeks and more time off and i don't know how it could get much shorter in france where they i think they only work about 30 hours a week now um and, you know, at, at the same time, Jack Maher is calling for this, what he calls a 996 system, nine to nine, six days a week, which he describes as an opportunity and, and a blessing. So that, that kind of goes against what they're doing in Europe. Now, he, he recently said, and, and he talked about his, his, his formula, China's economy was likely to lose its vitality and impetus without this, you know, continued uh, work ethic, as, it, as he, he would put it. And his fellow super rich entrepreneur, Richard Liu, uh, the boss of the e-commerce giant JD.com, supports this theory. And he, he talks about you know China's unprecedented growth in the last 30 years. But he said this has created more what he describes as slackers, uh, obviously people who don't want to work, you know, on the 996 formula. Um, you know, he, he, he talks about you know, not not only these sort of slackers, but uh, you know, they obviously these these two guys don't really care much about people's um, you know life outside of work, right? You know, because if you add on say one to two hours of commute time, either side, you know, getting into work, getting home again, that sort of thing, that that nine nine six formula might look more like a seven eleven six, like start at seven, setting out your day, and then getting home at 11 after finishing at nine o'clock, you know, or thereabouts. So seven, 11, six days a week is quite a lot, isn't it, right? So they, you know, they don't care much about their, they don't seem to care much about their their, their employees' life outside of work, family life, work-life balance, perhaps that doesn't even exist in their, their vocabulary. Now, the communist state of China has obviously seen, you know, huge economic growth in the last, you know, few years, 10% average for, for over 25 years from the 70s to the mid 2000s and it, all right, it's leveled off in the last few years at around about six percent but that, that's a, a growth rate that the US and, and Britain which is probably less than two percent would, would die for a six percent growth rate other countries in Asia are also growing at that sort of rate I think the Philippines is growing at something like six percent per annum um, but that's at a small base you know but you know that they've done this perhaps on people working very hard um, although some might say that you also need productivity, not just uh, people slaving away for, for, for 12 hours. And it's clear what the, the communist state wants in China, that they want to control the world. They, they want to literally uh, dominate the world. They're, they're, they're in Africa. They're all over Asia. They're putting their markers down. They're, they're lending money uh, at, at quite high interest rates to to, to countries where there there might be sort of dictatorship type presidents who, uh, you know, will willingly welcome the Chinese in and their their money. Where that money goes, we don't quite know. Uh, but with with this, that they're, they're controlling road projects, rail projects. They're controlling the minerals and the countries with minerals all over the world. But more worryingly, they're controlling the, the the shipping lanes around the South China Sea, which they see as all of their territory, they, they don't seem to recognise this thirteen mile from your coast rule, where over thirteen miles is international waters, and this is why they've been setting up, um, you know, in just occupying islands and building new islands in the sea, 
um, what, what you might call static uh, aircraft carriers and, and also building this Silk Road, which they want to run all the way to Italy. So China obviously has a, a, a goal to dominate the world. And you can see this with this China trade war with America, which uh, appears to have settled down. The markets have bounced back a little bit. Uh, but we, we don't know how that, that will be the end of it. But Trump is, is really the only one who's standing up against China. And so, no, it doesn't have to be this way. You know, the West has got to push back a little and not just allow their economies to go down while China goes up. And, and that's what I'm just reporting things that have been said by his, his chief strategist. But getting back to the sort of working week, um, Lou found that his company JD.com and he, he said his work ethic was such that he would set his alarm during his sleeping hours to wake up every two hours to offer his customer a 24 hour service. And he's just said that, you know, in the last four years, um, uh, he's not reduced his staff, but he's hinting that he will reduce his staff because he said it's expanded so rapidly that there's more people giving orders than uh, actually doing any work. And they used to say too many chiefs and not enough Indians, you know, the old Western thing. Um, so, uh, you know, his number of staff, see, he seems to be hinting that he will get rid of some of these slackers, as he, as he calls them. And, you know, OK, he talks about um, his working hours and waking up every two hours, but that doesn't give you a good sleep, does it? You can't really get an, a good sleep if you're setting your alarm during the night to wake up every two hours just so you can answer a call or something. There must be different ways of, of doing that. Um, so we, we, we just have to see how, how this goes. Um, Jack Ma, I've written about him in my in my new book, which is about debt and other people's money. And I talk about how he's built his company from scratch uh, using other people's money, using the OPM formula, not the 996 formula, using the OPM formula to build Alibaba and, and using billions of pounds of other people's money, not just small amounts of loans and this sort of thing. And I'll, you know, when my book is released, you can read all about Jack Maher in that, but he's obviously a super successful guy. Now, okay, getting back to, you know, he's worth 40 billion, but but getting back to, um, you know, the, the working hour, most business owners, people who own businesses and start businesses, don't just work a nine to five day. I don't know many that work just nine to five and clock off and go home and forget about work. Even if they go home, they're probably taking work home, they're thinking about work, they're, they're doing their tax returns or something outside of the normal working hours. However, you know, there is an argument to say that working too many long hours can be counterproductive, right? And at a certain point, it, it, the, the productivity definitely slackens off. Now, a recent US Department of Health and Human Sciences study, which is called Overtime and Extended Work Shifts, uh, Findings on Illness, Injuries and Health Behaviours, found that Working beyond eight hours actually posed health risks, um, lowered productivity and, and probably led to errors. Certainly no, working more than 10 hours did not offer any further productivity. Now, when I was running the business with a lot of staff, yeah, the owners, myself and the other owner, we, we really put in long hours. You know, we, we did the 12 hours a day, the six days a week and, and all that sort of thing, especially when we're building the business up. And then once the business takes off, you try and delegate more, but you still end up working all the time and, and you're taking emails on your phone and, and calls and that sort of thing. You know, and but I, I found that working too many days into the night where you just, you know, you, you see all your employees go and you say goodbye to everyone. Then the cleaner arrives and, you know, then you say goodbye to the cleaner and you know you're late because the cleaner's gone now. And then you haven't eaten and you're, you're sort of still working at nine, ten o'clock. Is it productive? I, d I don't think it was productive. I think in some ways we would have been better off to, to go and eat, uh, go home and rest, maybe then put in an hour or two or, or just come back early in the morning. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it was productive. Our best employees arrived at work on time, you know, not like running in at the last minute, but they were there 10 or 15 minutes earlier, got themselves set up. They, they worked throughout the day. They worked efficiently. They didn't spend time talking to their friends and, you know, gossiping around the, the, the water uh, fountain and, and, you know, just messing around during the day. They worked, they got their, their work done and then they left on time, but their desk was clear. They prioritised their work, they'd done what they needed to do, they were good at their job and then they left. And I remember one girl, we'd see her going off with her gym bag to go to a, 
a, a class down at the gym. So she didn't burn herself out. She didn't like leave herself that so she didn't have any more energy left. She still had energy to, to go to the gym, cook a nice meal, come back in the morning refreshed. And I, I, I think that that is probably a better way of doing it than just sort of burning yourself out and you're like this and oh, I've got another long day ahead. You know, it, it in some ways it shows that you haven't been able to get your work done during the day. Maybe you, you've just, um, you know, not been that efficient. You, you've not really been focused during the day. You've not prioritised and focused your work during the day. So at the end of the day, what are you? You're, you're, um, you, 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 you fail to get your work done during the time and you're taking work home and that sort of thing. And uh, there's an old story about a kid who said to his mum, why does daddy always have to work at home and take his work home? And the mother said, well, he's, he's just busy and he has to, he's just got a lot on. And the kid said, well, can't they put him in a slower class or something? You know, because in a way, perhaps he, he should have got his work done so he can spend more time with, with his family. I'm not saying don't work long hours, but, you know, there's got to be a balance there as to how many hours you can work and still uh, keep efficient. Because many, many corporations, of course, may regard employees as expendable pawns in the game of business, you know, uh, and say, well, if you burned out, that's just an occupational hazard. We'll get somebody else. I mean, in China, with a billion people, I'm sure they can, you know, they haven't got a recruitment problem. And, you know, in some industries, they drive people to the edge. And, and, and there's always some, particularly in the entertainment industry, where people just work 12 or 14 hours on a shoot and if they don't like it, well, someone else will do it. There's always somebody who, who will come into that type of industry and work. Um, you know, but the most profitable companies, the best companies, the companies that last in the, in the long run, invariably look after their, their staff well, good paying conditions, and that brings out the best in people. It, they may still work hard, they may still work long hours, but they, they, they make the conditions such that people want to work those hours. Now, I mean, who says that eight hours is the standard working day anyway? It, maybe it relates to going back years to, to light, you know, how much light there is during that. I don't know. I, who says eight hours is standard? Some people might get more done in three or four hours. One of our best employees was, was a part-time worker. She only worked uh, mornings and, and in the afternoon she picked up her kids. She always seemed to get a lot done and she was always pretty good. That's not the same for everybody. I mean, uh, some people can literally put in a 10 or 12 hour day without any problem especially if they're doing something that they love and, and maybe a business owner loves what, what he or she is doing and, and they'll put in 15 hours a day who knows and you know many professionals like doctors and lawyers regularly work 50 to 60 hours a week and they certainly had to work though those hours when they were training doctors have had to work 70 or 80 hours during their training period so it's, it's not unusual but not everyone has the same desire, the appetite for work or stamina to work those hours. And I think you've got to do whatever's right for you. Um, you've got to look after your health and your body because, you know, without those things, you can't work hard and, you know, you can't enjoy life to the full. So just, just look after yourself and don't burn yourself out because that's not productive for anybody. And, and you, you, you and your mind and your body are the money-making machine. You are the goose that lays the golden egg. So you've got to look after that first so that, that that's that's my message is is find the right balance for you find you know if you if you work if you're self-employed find out when when is the best time for you to work do you work better in the mornings do you work better in the afternoons or evenings for most people they're fresher in the morning and they have that lull in the afternoon some people have a second wind i i do in in the evenings but you've got to find the right balance for you we can't all be uh, jack ma <laughs> Okay, so thanks for listening and thanks for tuning in on, on Facebook Live. Uh, speak to you all very, very soon. Thank you.